Hey, welcome back, everybody. Good Thursday. Hopefully, we're having a wonderful one out there. And boy, oh boy, have things really picked up overnight in the models, specifically in the tropics, where we've been watching this area uh, of interest over the past couple of days. And they were kind of back and forth on the models within the past 72 hours or so. Uh, but last night, they really latched onto this thing uh, and are showing a bit of a concerning picture here going into next week. So that'll be a big part of today's video. And we'll start there with the tropics for all of you folks who I'm sure are turning in or excuse me, tuning in rather for that. Uh, however, though, that is not the only area that we need to watch. We have some pretty active weather back home with severe weather uh, and the potential for a big time cool down and potentially uh, some uh, more damp uh, and maybe even some flooding conditions possible next week as well for some of us. So I'm gonna break all that down for you in today's video. Now, if you're new here, welcome. Uh, my name is Gerald. I'm a meteorology major at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte here in my junior year. Uh, so kind of on the second half of things, and I'm here to give you the latest information on everything that we're seeing out there. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely do so that really helps the channel, uh, helps me reach more people and helps get the word out, especially this time of the year when we have these concerning storms in the tropics uh, that, uh, you know, it's really important to get that uh, kind of information out to everybody. Also like the video, uh, comment, let me know where you're watching from, especially if you're new to the channel uh, and to all my regulars coming back, it means the world to me uh, and welcome back. Great to see you. Now, with that said, let's go and jump into things because, again, uh, I think uh, it's going to be a pretty active stretch here and we're going to have a good bit to talk about. So we'll start with satellite imagery like we've been doing for the past week or so in the tropics specifically. Now, uh, we do have a couple area of excuse me areas of thunderstorm activity through portions of the Gulf and even there through uh, portions of the Florida Keys and Cuba. Those are not a big concern. Now, we'll watch it. Obviously, it's that time of the year. You never say never uh, with any kind of storm system in that part of the world. But the bigger concern is back out here into the Atlantic, specifically this area I have circled. Um, and you're probably wondering, well, you know, why is that the bigger concern? The area behind it looks a lot more organized, which, uh, you know, I would generally agree with you. That area behind it definitely is a very impressive wave coming off of Africa. Uh, but this first one is one that uh, the models are really starting to latch on to. And uh, they've kind of been back and forth on it again for the past couple of days, but overnight into today, they really kind of are picking up with this and running with it uh, with the potential that this could get into the Caribbean uh, and eventually the Southwest Atlantic or potentially the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, so, you know, we're going to have a lot of questions, I think, over the next week or two. And again, this is still way out into the Atlantic. So this likely won't even get to the Antilles until uh, early next week, probably about next Monday. Uh, and then any impacts to the United States, if any at all, Again, I'm going to preface with that. Uh, probably still won't be seven to you know ten days away. So we've got to we got a way to go before you know we see anything directly from this. But now is a great time to start watching it. Uh, and even that area behind it, models are picking up on development with this one as well. Uh, this one just again is even further out there, and it's just too soon to know uh, with that. As again, it's still way out near Africa. So you can imagine if you're moving at 20 or 15 miles an hour and you start in Africa, yeah, it's going to take some time to get anywhere near the United States. So uh, the good news is we do have time. The not so good news though is again the models have really upticked with these and just to kind of zoom in on them a little bit the area that we're expecting development is probably right in this region specifically where we have some of this thunderstorm activity and uh, it's I won't say much better organized than yesterday but it's definitely not any worse uh, on satellite and again this is how these waves start they often start with this very ugly look not all waves start uh, as pretty as this one right behind it which again is definitely showing some signs of life uh, this morning and afternoon um, but uh, nonetheless again we're watching that first one a little bit more right now and you can see those thunderstorms are picking up around it we've got a general wave axis here so now all it's really got to do uh, is wrap this wave axis up, get some vorticity down to the surface and continue that thunderstorm activity around it. Uh, and then we will have our next storm, which I believe is Francine on the list, uh, if I'm not mistaken, probably should have double checked that beforehand. Um, but uh, again, that is what we're watching there. Uh, and again, the overnight models really came in a little bit more concerning. And because of that, we now are up to a 40% chance of development within the next seven days. Uh, last night, we were only at a 20%. Now we've doubled that up to 40. So uh, definitely going in the trend that you don't want to see for tropical development here. Uh, but this was kind of forecasted. I've been telling you folks, at least my regulars have been tuning in for about a week or so now, uh, probably even longer than that, probably about a week and a half. I've been saying as we get towards the uh, kind of very end of August and start of September, I am expecting expecting an uptick in tropical activity. Uh, and that's exactly what we're seeing here with this model, or excuse me, with uh, the forecast, I should say, from the National Hurricane Center, but our models as well. So it's uh, it's looking like it's going to be an active start to the month, an active Labor Day. Uh, and uh, we'll see if the rest of September follows through with that. Uh, unfortunately, you just never really know that far out, but we can, uh, we'll definitely, you know, continue to watch it. 
All right, so let's take a look at some model data. We'll start with the GFS here and all the models I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you three today, the GFS, the European, and I think the icon is the last one I have pulled up here as well. Uh, all of these are going to start on Monday morning. So uh, that's Monday morning Eastern time. Now, if you're watching in the Antilles, this is more like Monday afternoon or late morning. Um, but uh, again, this is this coming Monday. So still about 100 hours from now. Uh, and notice what we're seeing. Here we go. Here's that low pressure beginning to develop, beginning to get its act together. Uh, also, it's kind of hard to see, but way back behind it, there's our second wave also beginning to get its act together. So those are the two areas you're going to want to follow here as I move this map along. And uh, we'll get this into Monday afternoon. You're saying, okay, well, that first wave, the one that you said we should be concerned about, I don't really see anything. If anything, again, the one behind it still looks to have a little bit more, uh, you know, of pressure at the surface lowering. But we move this ahead at a time. This is next Tuesday afternoon. Still not a lot, but again, a rain shower is moving through the Antilles. This getting into the Caribbean. And then we get into Wednesday. Uh, and you'll notice this is when things begin to kind of really get going here. So this is less than a week out. This is about six days from now. Uh, so, you know, still a pretty long time in the world of meteorology, but getting closer for sure. Uh, and we now see low pressure forming at the surface. This would probably be a tropical storm at this point uh, with about 1,005 millibars just south of Puerto Rico uh, and Hispaniola. And continues that march through the Caribbean, beginning to strengthen up towards hurricane status by next Friday. So this is seven or eight days from now. Uh, we've got a hurricane on the GFS moving towards Jamaica and towards the islands of the Caribbean here, uh, and then eventually uh, crosses Jamaica as a hurricane, then continues to strengthen, impacting Cuba as a strong hurricane uh, near 10 days from now. So I'm not going to go any further than that right there on the model, but you get the general idea. If you just take a look in the map here, um, you know, there's a hurricane hurricane in the Caribbean. Uh, we've got strong high pressure here. We've got a little bit of an opening kind of in here. So you get the kind of general idea of what would probably happen next is this would likely impact the United States in one way, shape or form. Now, again, this is a way out, so I don't want you to take this and run with it, but uh, this has been a trend we've seen with the models. We've seen them picking up with this overnight, and again, if we go back, or go back, I really go forward, I guess, to the European model, uh, we'll show you know a similar picture. So here we go. This is uh, Monday morning on the European. We'll move this ahead into time. Uh, and again, we've got a tropical storm, uh, probably, I'd say, moving through the Antilles by next uh, Tuesday. So a little bit later in the European, probably about, uh, you know, 24 hour, more like 18 hour slower than the GFS for you folks down there in the Antilles watching. Uh, but a tropical storm, not a strong one, luckily. This doesn't show a hurricane. But again, we've got to watch it because uh, a lot of the times if these things spin up a little bit quicker than expected, uh, they can really start to strengthen sooner and I'll talk about that when we get to the ensembles how quickly this strengthens will be a very big deal and where it goes uh, but the European again brings us to tropical storm status also look at the wave behind it getting close to a tropical storm uh, as well here by the time we get into next Tuesday afternoon same story as the GFS, a strengthening storm moving through the Caribbean, uh, then south of Puerto Rico by next Wednesday morning and afternoon, south of Hispaniola as a hurricane by next Wednesday overnight into Thursday, uh, and then much like the GFS, a hurricane moving near the island of Jamaica uh, about eight or so days from now, maybe nine days. Um, so, you know, again, it's for my folks watching in the United States, which I'm sure are many of you, but Again, the storm is still where I just drew this X. Uh, this is where it's going to be in about a week. And even at that point, it won't even be in the Gulf yet, likely. So uh, we've got a long time to go for folks that are monitoring this in the Gulf states and into the Atlantic states as well. Um, but the European, I'll just move it all the way out ahead in time here, about 10 days from now. It's a, it's a very similar track to the GFS with a strong hurricane moving through Jamaica and towards Cuba. Uh, and synoptically speaking, pretty similar as well. Strong high pressure here, high pressure back here, and then kind of an open in this region. So you get the general idea that this would probably get moved towards the United States uh, in about 10 or so days, probably again, more like 10 to 12 uh, to even 13 days. So uh, a long way to go. We've got plenty of time to monitor this, but I'll show you one more model. Uh, this is the Euro AI model. Actually, it's not the icon. I lied whenever I said it was the icon, uh, but uh, we'll move this ahead into time. Same general idea, um, and I'm going to just skip it ahead. The big difference, though, is you'll notice this instead brings it into the Yucatan Peninsula uh, in about 10 days. So uh, I show you that one just to say that nothing is written in stone. The models are going to bounce around, but the most important thing from overnight is this map right here that I'm going to show you. Uh, I say this map. It's kind of this map. It's kind of the next map I show you, but these are our ensembles. Uh, let me move this ahead to the latest hour that we have. Uh, these are the GFS ensembles, and uh, you'll see it even better whenever I show you the European, but again, here 
here's the second wave. There are signs that one will develop. But this is the first wave uh, right in here. And you'll notice we're seeing an uptick uh, compared to the day before. And you can really see it if we look at the European ensembles. I mean, this is uh, this is a really strong signal for tropical development. Probably, or I say probably, definitely the strongest we've seen since Ernesto. Uh, and again, this one, unfortunately, is in probably a worse place for a lot of folks. But what I want to add here uh, is the strength of this system is very important early on. Again, most of the ensembles agree uh, probably only you know an open wave a tropical depression maybe a tropical storm as it gets towards the Antilles uh, after that though uh, how quickly it strengthens is very important. If it strengthens quickly, uh, then we get some of these more northern members that kind of pull this up towards uh, the Dominican Republic, um, into portions of Puerto Rico, and towards the Bahamas. Uh, the members that wait a little bit longer to strengthen it really keep this in the Caribbean and then eventually get it into the Gulf of Mexico. So uh, definitely a concerning look on the overnight models, one that you don't want to see here, especially going towards peak hurricane season. And I've talked about it. The ocean temperatures in the Gulf and the Caribbean are really off the charts. So uh, if a storm is able to get there and has a uh, low wind shear and enough uh, relative humidity to work with, uh, we really could see quite a strong storm system. So uh, I'm watching it for you. Again, that's the latest we have. Nothing written in stone yet, but a big uptick overnight in models. And I kind of mentioned this for the past week or two that I figured we'd get a storm in this general area in this time frame. Uh, and unfortunately, that kind of looks like what is happening. So uh, we'll keep you updated. But again, that's not the only thing we have to talk about. We do have active weather back home and you folks in the northern Great Plains are well aware of it. Uh, big time upper level low here moving over portions of Montana. Uh, and let's see if I can get my Canadian provinces right. Let me know for you folks in Canada. Uh, I'm going to guess Saskatchewan maybe or that might be the one to the right here. Uh, it's one of those two. But <laughs> <laughs> Again, sorry, um, I'm an American, so uh, I should probably really brush up on that, though. Either way, though, the important thing, though, is we're seeing strong storms in this area due to that um, uh, cutoff low. So... Again, this big area of some divergence aloft here, we're seeing storms fire up and we had some big time storms yesterday, including a tornado basically right where I told you it happened there near the Dakota border uh, near the Missouri uh, River. So uh, that definitely panned out. Unfortunately, the good news is from what I saw, it looked to be in a very rural area. In fact, uh, most of the storm chasers that were st uh, chasing it couldn't even get to it because the Missouri River was in the way, uh, which uh, also kind of blows my mind as somebody from the east that has uh, relatively speaking, you know, pretty stellar uh, infrastructure. It's crazy how little roads there are out there and how little, uh, little excuse me, I can't talk all of a sudden, uh, river crossing. So again, just kind of an uh, interesting thing there. But uh, nonetheless, we'll talk about the weather again. Uh, so that's kind of the big weather maker. We do again have this disorganized kind of blob of showers and storms down into the Gulf. This is getting kind of pulled upward uh, due to a couple features. One, due to kind of this flow uh, just out of the Gulf in general. Uh, but also we have a little bit of some spin here in the mid-levels here uh, that is helping to kind of rotate this in and that is bringing some shower activity and some thunderstorm chances uh, for sure but uh, again the bigger deal will be this big low pressure and this front with it uh, that we're seeing throughout the next coming days now if we take a look at radar imagery uh, it's uh, again a pretty active scene this morning you can see this front getting going not hard to find uh, there's that line of rain in front of it and again some pretty feisty storms up through North Dakota and Minnesota this morning uh, if you're up that way definitely let me know what you're seeing outside of there again showers and storms near the Gulf states and into the south Southeast, uh, but pretty quiet everywhere else. Now, not completely. We are seeing a couple showers in some places, specifically uh, through the Ohio River Valley. And uh, we'll see definitely more of that this afternoon. Um, but uh, that's kind of the latest here on radar. Now, um, watches, warnings, advisories. The biggest thing we have right now on the map are heat advisories and all of these uh, kind of orange shaded areas, St. Louis, Cincinnati, Charleston, West Virginia, uh, Eastern North Carolina, Southeast Virginia, Birmingham, Jackson, uh, up towards the Little Rock area. It's, it's going to be hot again. Also air quality alerts for some of those major metropolitan areas uh, in those gray boxes. So uh, another hot afternoon on the way. It's going to feel like summer again. Um, you know, I, I don't know what else to say about that really. It's just, it's going to be hot. The good news though, again, is we do have a cool down on the way and I'll talk about that um, big time here in just a second but um, that's uh, that's kind of what we're seeing here on the watches warning and advisory map uh, for now now again this afternoon I do expect that to become more active we do have another severe weather risk today uh, including a tornado threat so um, I'll start in the east here uh, through Virginia, West Virginia, just kind of this mid-Atlantic area in general. Uh, biggest threat there will be strong straight line winds and some large hail. 
Uh, same story here in this yellow shaded area near the Twin Cities and down through Des Moines. However, we also have a tornado threat once again in this region. It's a 5% uh, chance of seeing a tornado within a 25 mile radius, generally in that yellow shaded area on your map. So uh, gonna wanna watch out for that. Again, more tornadoes are possible today with all of that spin in the atmosphere thanks to that uh, mid-level low pressure system. Now, the map I normally use, which is Tropical Tidbits, is down, unfortunately. I guess we had those crazy model runs overnight and everyone freaked out and flooded the website, so um, that's okay. We will uh, we'll use this, which is a little different, but it'll be fine. Uh, so we'll go into this afternoon, and again, you'll notice this is when the severe weather threat really kicks up. It's this evening through the Northern Great Plains uh, and into portions of the Midwest. Obviously, this big time squall line is going to be a concern. Anywhere along it, we could see strong, severe storms. However, notice how it breaks up a little bit here in the middle. This is where the tornado threat will be the highest. These storms will be a little bit more discreet and have a higher chance of spinning up. Um, the good news though is again, that should swing through uh, during the evening and overnight hours and then we'll clear out behind it. So it's not one of those days I don't think where you have to worry about one round of storms and then another round it should just be the one round and you're done. However, that round is going to pack a punch and obviously uh, again with that tornado threat, our updraft helicities are going to be pretty impressive through Minnesota and even portions of Wisconsin and Iowa today. So we're going to want to watch out for that. Again, not all these storms are going to produce tornadoes, but they're going to have a higher chance of producing tornadoes. So again, I'm really watching specifically this area right in here that I have circled through much of the southern half of Minnesota, uh, northern Iowa, and western Wisconsin for that chance of a couple tornadoes today uh, there through the Dairyland. So uh, watching out for that. Again, have a way to get watches, have a way to get warnings uh, because it's going to be a pretty feisty evening. That's not the only area I'm watching though for severe weather. Again, as I showed you, the mid-Atlantic, a chance for some strong storms today. Uh, this gets into this afternoon and evening. Notice some storms from Pennsylvania all the way down through the Carolinas. Uh, any of these could try to get going with some strong uh, you know, wind and some large hail. Uh, and just out of pure curiosity, I'm gonna take a sounding here real quick and uh, take a look at kind of what we're seeing. Um, so yeah, it looks really to me like the biggest threat here absolutely would be uh, large hail and wind. Not much of a tornado threat out of this. Uh, again, we'll call it non-zero, uh, but pretty low freezing level, meaning hail will have a pretty fun time this afternoon and a pretty good amount of instability Again, it's been very hot, so uh, we could definitely see um, some uh, strong uh, downdrafts and uh, again, hail will be the main threat. But this works on through the mid-Atlantic this evening and into the overnight. Severe threat should die down as the sun dies down. Uh, and then we'll get into tomorrow afternoon and we'll have more afternoon storms. But we'll talk about that more here in just a second. Now, more severe weather on the way. Again, that's just today. We get into tomorrow. Uh, we have a marginal risk, so nothing out of the world or out of this world and you would expect this that uh, area of low pressure is going to kind of pull to the north and it's very occluded at this point just meaning it's losing some of its punch uh so Again, a lower end severe weather threat tomorrow, but one will watch from Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, all the way down to St. Louis. Uh, and then even on Saturday as well, we could have the chance of a couple strong storms through the Northeast uh, and the Northern Mid Atlantic. So uh, again, all these fronts moving through, you would expect severe weather with them. It's not uh, that unusual to see, uh, especially this time of the year. Often this is whenever we get more of those mid latitude cyclones to form uh, and thus more severe weather just as the seasons change and that jet stream dips back south again. Uh, that's uh, something you would expect. So let's take a look at our height anomaly maps and kind of uh, put this together with what we're seeing on the ground. And uh, we'll start here with this afternoon. Again, uh, this block of blue is basically just an area of cooler than average weather from the surface to 500 millibars. So um, it's uh, generally, again, that just means that we have low pressure forming uh, due to, you know, that um, cold air being more dense. Again, it's kind of lowering the pressure there, uh, just getting the science a little bit. But uh, anyway, that kind of swings on out of here by the time we get towards tomorrow. Uh, and again, we could see some leftover severe storms along this kind of gradient here where, we're, where the jet stream is going to be a little bit stronger uh, into the weekend, but the real show starts next week. Uh, this is Saturday afternoon, uh, and then Sunday afternoon, and here we go. Look at this big area of low pressure and troughing. Uh, again, if I just draw this trough axis, uh, really swinging on through, and um, this, this is one that could bring some pretty good storms with it. It could bring definitely some cooler air. Uh, again, I'm expecting high pressure to form on the backside here uh, and kind of funnel this area of cold air down uh, through portions of the east, and I think we could get a pretty good cold air damming setup next week out of this. 
Now, uh, if you're unfamiliar with what cold air damming is, uh, I'm sure my folks in the Carolinas and Virginia are pretty well familiar, but basically uh, what happens, and I'll show you in just a second. Actually, before I explain it, let me get to that point in the map uh, and then I'll explain it. But here we go. This is coming through the next couple of days. Again, that front trying to work on through becoming relatively weak as it does. But again, we're going to get that reinforcing shot of cold air uh, into the end of the weekend and start of next week. But anytime now through this weekend, increased storm chances here uh, in front of that front where we've got some pretty big moisture in the atmosphere. Uh, and we're going to definitely see that chance of some afternoon thunderstorms again now through this weekend. You'll notice those flare up. This is Saturday afternoon. Uh, so again, college football starting, maybe bring an umbrella, especially through the Ohio River Valley, uh, down through Arkansas, Texas, Oklahoma. I think the Carolinas, again, an afternoon storm will be possible. Um, so, you know, definitely watch for that. I think a little less widespread, though, compared to areas of the Northeast. Now, here we go. This is in this weekend. Here comes that trough. And look at this. We've got a storm forming off of it. This is pretty common here. A nice uh, mid-latitude cyclone getting going here. So we could see severe weather into portions of Canada this weekend. I normally don't forecast severe weather in this area because there, you know, you don't really have a storm prediction center like we do in the United States, uh, at least that I'm aware of and that I can find easily. Um, but if you do, let me know. Send me the link and I'll uh, maybe do that in the future. Uh, but this low pressure that tries getting going into this weekend, this could easily cause some severe weather for you folks uh, through Ontario. Ontario, Montreal, even Toronto. Uh, keep your eye out even into the northern United States. Again, this could dip down with severe weather for you folks. Uh, again, this trough is becoming negatively tilted, just meaning it's really got a lot of punch behind it uh, going towards this time frame. Now, that swings on through Sunday afternoon. And on the backside, here's the high pressure into next week. We've got high pressure forming at the surface, and this is when that cold air damming will really begin, I think, especially going into next Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, again, this high pressure scooting off towards the Ohio River Valley and Great Lakes, and this is what happens. Uh, again, the flow around high pressure is clockwise here. So this is going to funnel air out of this cooler region of Canada uh, down the spine of the Appalachia chain. Uh, and what happens is cold air is dense, so it doesn't rise like heat, so it hits the side of the mountains here. Uh, and it can't go up and over them. So it kind of just gets trapped here in the foothills of South Carolina, Georgia, North Carolina, Virginia, even down through the Piedmont. Uh, and oftentimes it can take a while to erode it. And what happens is we get this warm air up and over it. Sorry, I just punched the microphone. Um, we get this warm air up and over it uh, and that can cause precipitation. And you're noticing that beginning here next week uh, as we're kind of getting this interaction between these two boundaries. Uh, look at some of this precipitation forming through the south. So uh, I think it's going to be a rainy week next week through the southern tier of the country. I think it's going to be um, a cooler week for portions through especially the Ohio River Valley, the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. Uh, the Deep South may still you know, be pretty warm, but we take a look at this on dew points. Here comes that first front. Again, it tries to get the job done this weekend, fails a little bit, but then here comes that reinforcing shot of cold air uh, and drier air, I should say. And then here's that cold air damming by next Wednesday specifically. Again, notice how the dew points are lower here into Georgia and South Carolina, but then uh, increasing here through Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and portions of Mississippi. So uh, again, a telltale sign of some cold air damming, but drier air nonetheless uh, is definitely kind of working through these regions by the time we get to the middle of next week and could hold on for a while. In fact, there's signs maybe even another storm system behind that brings another shot of cool air. So uh, we might get a bit of an early fall this year. We'll see if we can get this continued cycle of storm storm systems. Uh, in fact, if I remember correctly, last year we had a pretty good fall too, so I uh, might get lucky again two years in a row. Temperature-wise, it's going to be hot for, again, much of this week. We'll see some afternoon storms. That'll cool things down through the weekend. Uh, if you're up into the northern Great Plains, it's going to feel pretty nice, I'll say, but through the southeast, mid-Atlantic, uh, the deep south, it's going to stay warm until next week's reinforcing shot of cool air. Uh, and you'll notice if I just pause this at next uh, Wednesday afternoon and evening, again, most of us in the east now getting below average temperatures, whether that be from the drier rain, or excuse me, the drier rain, yeah, that's an oxymoron if I've ever heard one, uh, from the drier air or rain. Uh, again, either way, it should cool things down just a little bit here into next week. And the Climate Prediction Center agrees here. Temperature outlook through the next six to 10 days, uh, high likelihood of below average temperatures through the east and the Ohio River Valley, still going to be warm in the deep south. And I mean those Gulf Coast states. So uh, Galveston, New Orleans, Biloxi, Mobile, the entire state of Florida, still going to be warm. And you folks out west, yeah, Ridge built back in, not great. Uh, but the rainfall outlook, I'm just as, um, I don't want to say concerned, but just as uh, intrigued by, we'll 
we'll say. Uh, so again, increased chances of some rain here along the Gulf Coast states, and I think we could get some flooding out of this. Uh, it's a setup that generally promotes some flooding, so we'll have to watch for it. Uh, and then again, right after this, this is six to 10 days, 10 to 14 days, we could have Francine that also brings some rainfall uh, to areas that have gotten a lot recently. So uh, that's the latest there. Again, an active scene out there in the weather. Tropics are a very big deal right now, I think, uh, and something we're gonna wanna monitor for sure over the next couple of days, and you're gonna wanna come back. So again, if you haven't already subscribed, do that, hit the bell for the latest notifications. It'll tell you every time I upload with an update here. Uh, and we may do some evening videos over the next week or two, we may do some live streams, if things uh, can stay, or, or excuse me, if they stay uh, consistent there through uh, the Caribbean and eventually potentially into the Gulf. So with that said, I appreciate y'all hanging in there with me. Have a wonderful rest of your Thursday. Get out there, enjoy it, keep an eye to the sky, and I'll see you all tomorrow.